Good evening everyone, this is Oskoko Kwajiman from the University of Cape Coast. I bring to you structure equation modeling analysis and this one is empowered by Quick Action Consult in Cape Coast. If you want anything concerning data analysis, methodology and reset method, and get in touch. These are some examples of the structure equation modeling, how the, the, the outlook look like. So with this one, it look at the types of leadership and employee performance by modeling the causal relationship or the, the, the mediator of employee characteristics, how it affects employee performance vis-a-vis -vis the leadership style that we have. Then you can move into something like this, understanding the unknowns and the address and these are simple ones. These are complex and we have another complex one like this. This one was to analyze safety behaviors of temporary construction workers by his hand Shin Ita 2015 and they look at the job stress, safe, perceived fatigue, personal characteristics, safety behavior and other things. We are moving on to the introduction to structure equation model. Same analysis is also known as the analysis of moment, covering structure analysis, path analysis or causal modeling. Structure equation model is a second generation data analysis technique which can be regarded as generalization, integration and extension of familiar techniques such as analysis of variance, multiple regression analysis, general linear model and factor analysis. With this Structure equation model is a complex and it comprises of these analysis such as the ANOVA multiple regression and the general linear equation model. Thus, it integrates or harmonizes numerous different multivariate techniques such as path analysis, confirmatory factor analysis, causal modeling with latent variables, analysis of variance, and other things. Structure equation modeling, it aids in achieving a set of interrelated research objectives in a single way or systematic and comprehensive analysis by modeling the relationship among multiple independent and dependent variables constructs simultaneously according to Jefen et al. 2000. It permits researchers to stimulate or simultaneously estimate the relationship between observed and unobserved variables and the relationship among set variables. It also helps in predicting a mediating variable. Moreover, it promotes the combination of both continuous and categorical observed and latent variables concurrently. We are looking at software. There are some software that can be used to analyze structure equation model. Not any software can do that. So according to BIND 2012, the following are the major application software for structure equation modeling analysis. We have the AMOS, that is the analysis of moment structures. Then CALIS, the covariance analysis and linear structure equations. Then we have the AKS equations the Lizri linear structure relationship, the M plus, the MX, the Ramona, the reticular action model or near approximation. Then we have the SEPA, the structure equation modeling and path analysis. So other software also with the smart PLS uh, that we will talk about it later. Then from here we are moving on to the basic steps in structure equation modeling. In structure equation modeling, basically, these are five steps that you need to follow. We look at the model specification. We look at the data preparation, modeling estimation, evaluation and modeling modification. With the model specification, first one, look at whether the theories that underpin your study, how it look like. That's where you link the variables that you are researching into. Then second one, look at the data preparation. You look at the sample size, look at you do the normality of the data, then you check the consistency and any other thing that you need to do so. Then you look at the model estimation. 
you, you, you run the model and then you look at the evaluation. You evaluate the model and see whether it was supposed to measure what it's supposed to measure, whether there have been some any issues that you need to further or restructure it. Then you come to the model modification. This is the state that you need to modify or edit the model that you've already run to see what you want. And after that, you run the last one, then you report on your analysis. We are looking at basic concept. For instance, we have the manifest or the observed variable. When you talk about the manifest variable, it is also known as indicator variable. That is a variable that is directly observed or measured. It is represented in path analysis or models as rectangle. We will look at that later. Then looking at the latent or construct or factor. There is an observed variables and they are termed as latent variables, factors or constructs. It measures concepts that are complex and abstract that cannot be directly observed or measured. A latent variable or a factor is measured indirectly through one or more observed directory variables that reflect or form the factor. It is represented in path models as circles or ovals. Then we have formative measurements and reflective measurements or model. We will look at that one with the examples that we so earlier on on the examples of structure equation models we have the formative measurement model this is a type of measurement model in which the direction of the measurement or arrow is from the indicator variable to the construct that's the latent variable it is assumed that the indicator variable caused the measurement of the construct whereas when you look at the reflective measurement model it is a type of measurement model in which the direction of model or the measurement or arrow is from the latent to the indicator of the observed variable. So we are going back to look at the examples of the structure equation model that we have. So looking at this one, this is a formative model. It is forming this construct. Whereas we have the reflective model. This is a reflective model moving from this side to the other ones. So these are the basically the difference between the formative model and the reflective model. This is the formative, it's forming the personal characteristics. Whereby this employee performance is believed to be uh, measured through this. So this is called the reflective model and this one is called the formative and this is reflective. So these are the basically the examples of it. We are looking on to still the basic concept. We look at the measurement error. This is the difference between the true or the actual of a variable and the variable obtained by a measurement. The error terms. This is, the, this is a captured and unexplained variance in construct or indicator variable when path models are estimated. Measurement theory. This specifies how the latent variables are measured. It tells how the direction in which the variables are measured either formative or reflective. The measurement model defines the relationship between a latent variable and observed indicator variable as I've already explained and showed to you diagrammatically. Structure theory. This specifies how the latent variable are related to each other. Thus, it shows the construct and the path between them. The structure model defines relationship among the latent variable and the observed variable that are not in the indicators of the latent variable. Then we look at the exogenous variable versus the endogenous variable. In the case of path analysis, independent and dependent variables are termed exogenous and endogenous variables in same respectively. Exogenous variables represent the variables that are extend an influence on the other variable and are not influenced by other variables in the model while endogenous variables represent the variables that are affected by the endogenous and other endogenous variables in the model. So this look at the independent and the dependent variable as we already know. The exogenous and the endogenous variable can be measured or be a latent, can be observed, measured or a latent variable. So they are interchangeably depending on the model and where it finds itself to be. In structure equation model, four 
geometric symbols systematically or schematically portrays variables and their relationship as I've explained in the formative and the reflective. Here too we have squares or rectangle. It represents observed variables or measured variables. Then we have circles or ellipses. This represents unobserved latent variables. Then we have a single-headed arrows. It represents the impact of one variable on the other. Whereas the double arrow or the, 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 the curved arrows, it represents covariance or correlation between pairs of variables. We are looking on to the PLX and CBM structure equation model. In estimating the relationship in structure equation model, there are two basic approaches covariance based structure equation approach and partial least square sum approach. Though the structure, though the covariance based sum approach is rampantly used, but it must be understood that each of the approach is appropriate for a different purpose based on the objective and the characteristics of the study, and this will be explored further. The estimation procedure of PLSM is based on an ordinary least square or partial least squares of regression, while the covariance based SEM is based on the maximum likelihood. Rules of thumb for choosing between the PLS and the SB SEM analysis. Looking at the PLS SEM analysis, it can be used when the sample size is small or data are not normally distributed. It can also be used when you are to use latent variable scores in subsequent analysis. It can also be used when the structure model is complex, many constructs and many indicators. Then formative measurements, you can also use this one. Then we are moving on to the purpose of predicting key target construct or identify key driver construct. Then on the CBSEM, that is the covalence based structure equation model, it can be used when the sample size is large or the data is normally distributed. Then there is a reflective mo a measurement model. The purpose of testing or confirming theory or comparison of alternative theories. So when you are to compare a theory or confirm a theory or to test a theory, the best approach is to use the CB same structure equation model. The error tends require additional specification. So these are some of the major differences or cases in which or situation in which you may apply PLS or a CBSEM for your structure equation model. For instance, using the AMOS, which is part of the CBSEM, that is the covalence based structure equation model analysis, we say that the IBM SPSS AMOS. It's a software which is an easy to use graphical interface for visual structure equation model. It provides a clear representation of models and publication quality path diagrams. It has become the first choice for those who prefer working graphically as the other models or software requires a lot of programming. With AMOS, researchers can quickly specify, view, modify their model graphically assess the model fits, make modification and obtain a publication quality graphic of the final model. Several notable features of AMOS included having a special measurement likelihood method for automatically dealing with missing data, analyzing measures of model with latent categorical factors, having the ability to produce bootstrap standard standard error estimates and confidence interval for parameter estimates and having the extensive capability for Bayesian estimation of model parameters or for Bayesian statistics. So this brings us to the end of the introduction to structure equation model. If subscribe for further updates and further information on structure equation model. Thank you.